Hi, this video is for Michael Wall, the owner of the YouTube channel. We are Kangs, uh, also running a website. I believe it's cornintheBible.com. So, um, you have made a few uh, claims on your channel. Some of them I find interesting. Some of them I agree with, such as I'm not a Caucasian. I'm Celtic and Germanic. Which both, both groups are not Caucasian at all. But you make many other claims that I find absurd. For example, Caucasians, the real Caucasians, are pretty much a fair skinned, white, whitish people. The Caucasus Mountains are not in South America. Now, you claim that the Caucasus Mountains are in South America because the Bible is set in South America, but For reasons I'll get into, I will tell you why I think that's not a case. You claim that you start you start off by claiming, I think in your second or third video concerning corn in the Bible, that I would not be an atheist, I am an atheist, that I would not be an atheist because I agree with the Catholic Church that the Bible was set in the Levant, what you refer to as, uh, what, what most people refer to actually as the Middle East, which um, you do pretty much agree that the Middle East is a Eurocentric term. It's the Levant, the Bible is set in the Levant. I would agree with you that many of the biblical characters are probably a very most likely black men or black people because the people in the Levant were pretty much black and many still are to these days. But the people uh, who are indigenous to South America and Mexico, though they may be dark, they're not really black. Let's start with you claiming that I'm not an atheist. Well, the definition of atheist by some American dictionaries is someone who believes there is no God. The definition, the actual definition of atheist is someone who doesn't believe there is a God. And, um, well, pretty much both definitions fit me. But uh, basically, I don't believe there is a God, therefore I'm an atheist. You'll say that an atheist is someone who believes in science, but they also happen to believe the Catholic Church, so they're Catholic. Well, most people believe that the Bible was set in the Levant, and... Most people are not Catholics. It's just the evidence that the Bible was set in the Levant, Levant is demonstrable. It's, it's pretty much a given. The Bible pretty much says that it is set in the Levant. George Lucas's Star Wars saga was set in a galaxy far away a long time ago. But nobody, besides a, a couple of nuts, will say that the events in Star Wars actually took place. It's set a long, long time ago in a galaxy far away. A Bible. I, 
I, and I don't have to believe in science to be an atheist. I could believe you and still be an atheist. I could believe whatever. I, I could believe in, in magic without God and still be an atheist. It just so happens that most atheists in the West also happen to be empiricist and rationalist who um, have respect for the scientific method to actually verify your claims before believing them. I mean, there, there could be atheists who have a dogma that no God exists, but that's not, that's not how people in this society have um, operated. We operate with the scientific method. We attempt to disprove our hypothesis. And if you look for evidence against the Bible being set in the 11th, then you will be using science to support your conclusion that the Bible was set in the labyrinth, though you'll find quite a bit of evidence against it. Let's move on to that now. So, right off the top of my head, there are many things mentioned in the Bible that just did not exist in the Americas before the arrival of Europeans. Pomegranates, figs, horses. Though horses originally did evolve in the Americas, they were extinct shortly after the arrival of humans, I think it was. So were uh, mammoths, and elephants are mentioned in the Bible, but uh, yeah, I'll give you that one. Um, another example, iron weapons. The Americas did not have iron weapons. There were copper weapons, there were brass weapons, or bronze, but no iron. And the wheel. The wheel is a middle is eleventh invention. The uh, yeah. The the various um, stories in the Bible are Mesopotamian myths um, retold in uh, in a Hebrew way. Next, um, just, a, just a few examples right there. Oh yeah, um, dromedaries, camels. There were llamas in the Americas, but those are, those are quite a different animal, a smaller, weaker one. Um, I'm not sure about this one, but I don't think that... Uh, Native Americans milked cattle. I, I, I'm not sure about uh, Native Americans milking uh, llamas or any other animals, but the bulk of Native Americans, even to this day, are lactose intolerant. Um, I don't know if there's any biblical references of adults drinking milk, but there are biblical references to milk. And um, I'm not sure which species they were milking, but to this day, many people uh, across Europe, India, uh, the Arab world, and parts of Africa, they milk many different species. Um, and many of those species have lactose in their milk. Native Americans typically rarely milk animals. And, uh, yes, if they do make cheese, the, the process removes the lactose from the milk, but 
I think there might be biblical references. Maybe I'm not sure, but there might be biblical references of adults drinking milk. It's just something to check on. Just to do your science to prove your idea or to, to try to disprove your idea that there is that, that the Bible is set in the Americas. Bull's claim. Now, um, you did state to me that, uh, yeah, the, um, that black people have existed long times outside of Africa. Well, yeah, I know a little something about that. Um, humans originally are from Africa. And uh, the first humans to leave Africa, uh, they were not us Homo sapiens. They were of species, several species uh, that evolved before us that are now extinct. The uh, first wave of humans to leave Africa, there's very little evidence for. But we think they were the ancestors of Homo florensis who uh, lived in, a, in small populations in what is now Indonesia and probably split from our line about a million years ago at the, at the very beginning of when we could actually say that we were no longer Australopithecines and we were now human. And uh, they evolved into a short species that uh, one of the first to split off of, from our line, but also one of the last to go extinct about 10,000 years ago. <clears throat> and ever since then, um, our own line evolved into Homo erectus, which uh, separated into several species which were scattered across Africa, Europe, and Asia. Those, the Homo erectus, um, comparing their skulls um, found all over the world, all over that side of the world, that, that is, were very diverse and um, kind of difficult to... Uh, to classify and, and um, comparing uh, the skulls of modern dogs today, seeing that they are all very different, but they're all very closely related. It, it is kind of hard to, to say whether or not different uh, groups of, of Homo erectus are the same species or not. But when we compare our DNA today, we, we see that we were all in Africa less than 80,000 years ago. The of our, it's, it's, it's thought that our species, after Homo erectus spread out, our species left Africa and displaced them. We don't know why that is. It, it, there is evidence that, um, that our modern species, Homo sapien, has absorbed some Homo erectus in populations where we've gone. We've um, absorbed Desnovans, we've absorbed uh, some populations of Neanderthals, but they all contribute very little to our modern DNA, that we are all basically African. And that is where we get into um, the debate uh, which was settled uh, between monogenist and polygenist. Uh, polygenist, um, Polygenists, uh, even today, um, they're, they're not very scientific. They go with um, the outdated science, which even men like uh, Charles Darwin, who were highly influenced by the scientific racism at the time, actually did a little science. And Darwin was one of the first to disprove um, scientific racism. Um, I've just read uh, a chapter in his book, The Descent of Man, where uh, the chapter on race and he 
he he has he's referencing a lot of junk science, but he's on the right track in a lot of case a lot of these cases, and he is pointing out quite correctly that we are all one race with just many variations. He points out that rather than sharp divides between our different populations, we graduate one race into another. Like, we, there can be some gen generalizations. I am very generalized for a white person. I am lactose tolerant. I have blue eyes. I have a European skull. But like many white people, I have curly hair. Though that might be typical, but it becomes more common the further south in Europe you go. Africans are a very diverse population. But the closer you get to the Middle East, the more they start to, uh, to the Levant, actually, they start to resemble people from the Levant. The people in the Levant, um, you go more towards Europe, they resemble Europeans. You go to, more towards Asia, they resemble a East Asians. Now, yes, there, and yes, I'll get back on topic. There are black people from outside of Africa. There are the Australians, the Australian Aborigines, who, um, they have very dark skin, but um, a lot of their features do not resemble Africans. The, their genetics is very distinct from Africans. And they were one of the first groups about um, 70,000 years ago to, that they arrived in Australia, 70 to 50 to 70,000 years ago. And they were one of the first, uh, they're, they're of one of the first waves of modern human migrations out of Africa. The, uh, About, about um, 40,000 years ago, there was another wave of human migration out of Africa, which was even larger, which went over the Himalayas and into Europe uh, right around the, the time of the extinction of the Neanderthals, uh, absorbed the remainder of the Neanderthals, and continued on into the Americas. I know that you do not agree with any of this because you do not agree with the theory of evolution at all. Which um, even creationists will accept uh, the four main um, definition, uh, the four main um, drivers of evolution, thus accepting the theory of evolution. Mutation, selection pressure, gene flow, and genetic drift alone together, our evolution. But you will also have to account for the fossil evidence of these human migration patterns and the genetic evidence of these human migration patterns. Thus, it would be very difficult to accommodate those with your claims, uh, even the claims that there were black people in the Americas. There were dark people in the Americas. But can you claim that those dark people in the Americas uh, the ancestors of modern Mexicans and, and many Latinos, can you claim 
that they were the same ancestors less than 20,000 years ago. Based on your features, and perhaps even based on your genetics, wouldn't it make more sense to claim that the bulk of your ancestry is from Africa less than a thousand years ago? <laughs> 